Well, I'm Jim Reddy, the uh, founder of Monte Vista, which we started in 1999. And I'm currently uh, founder, obviously, and that doesn't go away, and uh, CTO. I'm Joe Green, and I'm the architect on the Monte Vista Linux 6 product. I also work on the DevRocket uh, graphical development tools. I'm Mark Orbeck, I'm the director of Core Product Development. Hi, I'm Kristen Anderson. I'm the Director of Customer Engineering at Montevista, responsible for support and all the customer-facing functions. I'm Johnny Planaris, and I'm a software QA engineer. Yeah, the most critical thing is the naming of a company. Uh, and so, yeah, Yumiko, my wife, and I were yeah. engineers will appreciate this, at least Silicon Valley engineers. We were at uh, Cicero's Pizza on Stevens Creek in Cupertino before they moved. Yeah, and this is probably uh, late 98, maybe early 99, and, and the, the task at hand besides eating pizza was um, naming the company. Since we live in Cupertino, uh, and uh, there's an area that we go through every day practically called Monte Vista, and that seemed like a good, a good idea, you know, a real name, uh, Silicon Valley Cache or whatever, because it's in Cupertino. Uh, Jim Reddy and I and another person uh we're sitting around a table when we originally formed uh, Monte Vista. Uh, we used to joke about that uh, I was either employee two or three, depending on whether you count Jim Reddy. Well, it was a startup frenzy then, so 98, 99, 2000 kind of was the peak of that. Uh, people were, like myself, were thinking, you know, I have a good job at HP, I like the company. This is an opportunity to do something different. The first probably four months of my being in Monte Vista were very frantic, but also a lot of fun. We just kind of had to pitch in and do it all. Um, our goal was to make everybody know about Monte Vista. At one point we had a whole bunch of people packed into what had been an office for two people. I think we had eight people in there at one point. Is Linux a suitable, um, you know, embedded OS? And at that time the answer was, um, Effectively, no. I mean, there was no real-time capabilities whatsoever. You know, it was, it, was, it was just barely making it for servers at the time. Because there were lots of things that Linux uh, would have to be uh, modified to do that it wasn't actually set for or didn't have those capabilities. Taking Linux technology in the embedded space made sense. It's a very exciting time. Uh, it, it looks like Linux is becoming mainstream now. When we started Monte Vista, it was kind of just in little pockets here and there, people were using it on their own, and, and now it's mainstream. One of our challenges is that Linux has become so, um, so pervasive and such a fundamental part of the landscape, which is a success, no question. Um, you have to differentiate you know, at different levels. What's new and different about MBL6 is that it's really built around the concept that people will be customizing uh, for the product they're building. With MBL6 coming out, uh, it's a bit more frantic. I think it's a very exciting project. It uh, gives us a lot of uh, capabilities that we've been looking to develop for a long time in terms of flexibility and, and the ease of working with it, both for ourselves and for the customers. It uh, incorporates a lot of the things that we've learned over the last few years about how to provide Linux software and distribute it. I think it has a lot of advantages for the customers and it has a lot of internal advantages for us as well. You can have the best technology in the world, but if it's difficult for a customer to start with, then it's not perceived as the best. It's a proven technology now, and so like anything that will last some period of time, I believe it will clearly last through the year 2020. You know, if I want to be working 10 years from now, we'll still be doing, you know, no question that this will be a fundamental part, and I think that the main difference will be that uh, if it's 50 or 60 percent Linux now and, and a classic embedded system, it'll be, you know, very pervasive, uh, you know, probably in the 90 plus percent. As people do more and more things with the internet, as it becomes more and more intertwined with their work, you know, we're working in environments, you know, obviously there are the phones, there's internet in the cars now. Uh, it, it's becoming a very connected world. Monte Vista Linux is in some of the freeway cameras, so as you're driving down the road, they're keeping track of um, traffic. And I know some GPS devices today will tell you where traffic, you know, what the traffic is or whatever, but what if those devices could actually show you what's on the cameras? So not only are they showing you it's red, but you can get a feel for what it really is right now. I'd like to see a lot of devices in the future completely connected. I, I can definitely see an environment, you know, where you 
you just walk into a store and pick up the things you want or walk out and it's bringing up what you bought and you're not stealing the stuff, it's actually <laughs> using RFID and things like that to, to make all those experiences much simpler. Uh, hopefully we won't even know. It'll be that uh, pervasive. Yeah.